Okay, well, a very warm welcome to today's session. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, welcome to the Fast Track for Leaders session. Uh, we're starting, but uh, people are still joining, so uh, please feel very welcome. Um, and yeah, people can uh, join as we go. So we already had our first session on the Fast Track for Leaders uh, last week, which was on strategy. And today we're talking a bit more about implementation. So what are some of the practical pathways to make implementation of workforce nutrition a success in your organization? So my name is Miriam Klepkens. I'm in the Workforce Nutrition team at GAIN, the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. And I'm not alone. I've, uh, we've listed our colleagues uh, here below, both from GAIN and CGF, the Consumer Goods Forum. And together, we partnered in 2019 to establish the Workforce Nutrition Alliance. So during this session, before we start, as you uh, may have realized, all participants are muted during the presentation, but we can still interact with you. Feel free to ask all your questions in the Q&A uh, box and our team will be answering them live during this session. And at the end of the session, we'll also have a little bit of time for uh, discussion and for uh, Q&A. So as I already mentioned, last week we had a session on creating a successful strategy for improved nutrition. If you have missed it, we have the uh, slide deck and also recording available, uh, and we will share it in the chat with you. And I would definitely recommend uh, to take a look uh, if you weren't able to attend. So today we're talking about bringing workforce nutrition into your organization. So you've already decided that, um, and you may not be at this point yet, but once you did, uh, that workforce nutrition can definitely benefit your organization. And now you start thinking about, okay, how do I make this feasible? And today we're especially thinking about the role of a global lead on workforce nutrition. Someone is, who is setting out this strategy, uh, the implementation across the organization. And of course, you cannot do that alone. So uh, today we help you think about how to make that feasible without having to do everything yourself, how to empower others in the organization. So um, last time we already showed this sequence of things you need to think about when you are developing your workforce nutrition program. It all starts with assessing where you stand uh, doing a self-assessment scorecard that we have available and identify what the opportunities are for your organization. And then secondly, supporting different work sites to implement workforce nutrition in their context. And of course, once you have something going to monitor progress, monitor whatever is, uh, is going on in the organizations. And uh, in the end, also showcase that success. Um, for example, by telling impactful stories, but also by uh, increasing your benchmark scores uh, at UPNI, at the WBA. Um, if you want to know more about all of that, I would again recommend you to, uh, to watch last week's recording. So um, today we're focusing more on the implementation part. So how can you facilitate high quality implementation cost-effective implementation across the organization. Um, and the first thing we want to do is uh, for you to tell that story internally. Uh, I think it's <clears throat> extremely helpful to have a better understanding of what exactly we mean by workforce nutrition. So as we've already talked about last week, there are four different themes of uh, workforce nutrition, healthy food at work, nutrition education, nutrition-focused health checks, and then breastfeeding support. And uh, to, in today's session, we want to give you a little bit uh, of a deep dive in each of those themes and give some examples of what companies can be doing uh, just to give you, you some inspiration and get, uh, yeah, have you start thinking about what could be feasible in your organization. And as you 
will realize as we go through this, each company can do very different things depending on their setting, um, their needs, their population, uh, the resources they, ha they have available. Even at a, at a small budget, you can start with workforce nutrition. And the, whether you are an office located in France or a factory in the UK or even a factory in Kenya, it's very different settings, but each of those settings can do something, can start on the topic of workforce nutrition. So we have tried to gather some examples from across the globe just to get your, uh, give you some inspiration of what this could look like. So the first thing we want to dive into is healthy food at work. And um, as you can imagine, we're spending so much time at the workplace and whatever is available to us in terms of food at the workplace will have a huge impact of what we eat throughout the day. Of course, in some cases we bring our own food, but in many cases there's also uh, something available at the workplace and it can, can make a huge difference if, if this is healthy. And uh, at the same time, it's not, if not, nothing is available yet, um, there is huge potential to do something really impactful and concrete in the lives of your employees. And uh, also there's, I would, for each theme, we have developed evidence briefs on what the literature uh, says, what the evidence is for each of these uh, themes. So we will share them in the chat. And uh, I would definitely recommend to read through it to also understand a bit better the potential benefits of each of these uh, themes. So what can a worksite do uh, to make it a bit more concrete? Well, the first thing and very simple thing that can be done is to make sure that there is a separated eating space where people can have their own lunch that they may have brought from, from home, where they can access clean water, wash their hands with soap, uh, just make sure that the basics are in place. Uh, if you then want to do a little bit more, um, it would we would definitely recommend to think about serving healthy snacks they can, uh, it may seem small, but they can be a huge proportion uh, of our energy needs or our nutrient needs throughout the day. And you can imagine that if you feel a bit less concentrated because your blood, blood sugar is a bit lower, uh, a healthy snack can really help you to be more productive, be more present at work. Uh, so it can really make a difference. And of course, if you as a company um, are already serving food or you want to start serving food, we would definitely to, to recommend to um, shift towards a healthier offering. So whether that is in your canteen or your shop or a vending machine or your servings, um, you have a single meal option, uh, all of that can shift to healthier. And it doesn't have to be 100% healthy uh, right away. We don't want to scare people off that we're taking something away from them, which can be the initial feeling, of course, but we definitely encourage even taking small steps to a healthier offering can already make a big difference. And uh, related to that, also promoting these healthy options through information or pricing or uh, placement even, um, that can make a big difference. And then some companies are uh, not serving anything themselves, but employees may uh, often go to street vendors to get some lunch. So perhaps there is an opportunity to make a deal with uh, some of these street vendors to um, help them shift to healthier, a healthier offering or uh, subsidize the healthy food that they offer, for example. So some of the, the examples of companies that we're working with uh, is this first example from a garment factory in Bangladesh, where we have, uh, they were already providing a lunch, a hot meal, um, and we shifted that offering to be a bit healthier and also to include fortified rice so that people would need their, meet their nutrients uh, requirements. And in addition to that, iron folic acid supplements were provided. So in this program, uh, employees, uh, reduced anemia up to 32%, which makes a huge difference if you realize that anemia 
is uh, very much linked to productivity as well because it can cause fatigue if there's less anemia um, you're likely to have a more productive work workforce and uh, along with that people also improve their nutrition knowledge and uh, very important for many companies they improve their engagement with the company they um, really appreciate the company for doing this for looking after them and that definitely improves relationships and then there is this other example from Eatwell Global, who are in a very different setting. They have remote employees in the Netherlands and in the US. And um, because they didn't have an office space, like a physical place, uh, they decided to um, provide employees with a with this nutritious basket of food um, so that people could snack and have healthy mood, uh, foods at their home. So even when we look at working from home, there's definitely solutions on what a company can do. So looking at our next theme, uh, nutrition education, this can be an, a really important addition to anything that you're doing on the workforce nutrition. If you're uh, educating people alone without changing anything in the environment, we know from the literature that it's not as impactful but if you are combining it with healthy food at work or with breastfeeding support or with health checks, it can really make a difference because people do not only experience an actual change in their environment, but they also know why it could benefit them and they may increase their motivation to do something about it. So when a company is looking at nutrition education and introducing some elements of it, we always, always recommend with, to start with understanding the context. So what types of employees do you have? What are their nutrition challenges? Is it to have healthy, balanced diets? Is it um, to that perhaps there is overconsumption of unhealthy food, like highly processed foods, for example? Um, is it something related to micronutrient deficiencies, uh, like iron deficiency in women, for example? And then also to get a better understanding of what motivates people, how can we help people to change behaviors. And I think it's important to mention throughout everything that you do on workforce nutrition, uh, as a company, you can offer something, um, but it should always be voluntary for employees to participate. Uh, we don't want to force anything up to our employees, also not when we talk about nutrition education, because as you can imagine, people may feel a bit as if it's going into their personal space when we, uh, when as a company you uh, start telling people what to do. So you want to avoid that, but at the same time, uh, be supportive of your, of your employees who want to make healthy changes. So it's a key thing to involve your employees in this process to really understand what their needs are and how you can help them. So based on this information on like understanding your employees and their challenges a bit better, uh, you can think about the nutrition messages that you want to share and that are that resonate with them that really makes them uh, excited about the um, yeah about nutrition or about a healthier lifestyle. And uh, of course, you could have very different uh, groups even within your organization. Um, so in this whole process of understanding your context, that will also come up. And then uh, at the end, uh, start deciding, OK, what do we want to do? And we would always recommend to work within the existing business structure. So work with what you have. If you already have radio, make use of that. If you already have events, uh, make use of that through someone who shares their story, for example. So you can be very creative and uh, you can also use resources that are available in your country by the government, for example. So some examples on nutrition education is this first uh, cooking camp competition from India. So in the CT sector, we had a program where, uh, among other things, uh, we did cooking competitions where people could cook their favorite recipes and win prizes. And uh, in this creative way, People also uh, learned about nutrition and they learned about new recipes that they could integrate in their daily habits to have healthier foods. 
And of course, during COVID, we had to be a little bit more creative. So uh, what the team in India did, they um, decided to set up an online cooking demonstration where a nutritionist would uh, set up a video and her cooking station at, uh, at home. And people could just call in and cook along even if they wanted. They could just uh, yeah, view the video or they could uh, start um, and cook along with the nutritionist. And again, this is a very creative and even playful way to start integrating some healthy habits in your life. So another um, example from uh, a program we did in South Africa with a uh, avocado and tomato uh, producer. Um, we did a number of things on nutrition education, and one of them was that people could send in their photo of their lunch to a nutritionist, and she would then give some recommendations. Wow, this looks great, but perhaps you could add um, some fiber, for example. And um, these recommendations and photos were shared uh, with the broader pool of employees so that people could get inspiration from it. And this is, of course, as you can imagine, possible in many different settings. And related to this, they also send WhatsApp messages to people who were interested with, with some in, uh, information and inspiration on how you could integrate healthy habits into your life. So the next area is uh, nutrition-focused health checks. And many companies are actually conducting health checks for their, uh, for their employees. So for example, on an annual basis. And if you do that as a company, we would recommend to add nutrition indicators to that. So that could be uh, blood pressure, weight monitoring, cholesterol. Um, and ideally, this is also combined with follow-up counseling. And uh, again, as with the other topics, uh, we recommend these things always to be voluntary. Um, so the first thing that a worksite could do is to find a partner. We often don't have these skills in-house, so it's great to have a partner um, and, of course, start thinking about the relevant indicators for your specific setting. And this may depend, for example, on what the likely nutrition settings, uh, nutrition issues are within your um, yeah, within your group of employees. And the second thing, what we would recommend is to make it easy to participate. So it should always be voluntary, but of course we can make it more appealing by making sure that there is easy access. Perhaps um, people can access it at the workplace itself. So a nurse may come to the office, for example. Uh, and also that it's affordable. So either it's subsidized or uh, even free or at a reasonable cost for employees. And including counseling is a key element in making this a success, because as you can imagine, knowing what your nutrition status is, is one thing, but then acting upon it and having someone that can help you think through, okay, what are the changes that I now want to make in my life? Um, yeah, to start living healthier, that can make a huge difference and increase people's confidence in uh, that they feel that they can take action, that they can make a difference themselves. Uh, and the next point here is to make it safe, because as you can imagine, it's very sensitive for a company to gather uh, medical data. So we always want to make sure that uh, we have informed consent from employees and that the data is handled ethically. So um, if you work with an external partner, they, uh, they can be responsible for protecting that data and making sure that you do not have access to individual data as an employer. Uh, because the next thing is to monitor results, because of course it would be very interesting, especially if you have a broader workforce nutrition program, to know if these uh, things, if uh, yeah, these nutrition indicators, whether they change over time, whether your company becomes healthier, so to say. And um, that's definitely something you can do, but uh, always with the note that the data should be anonymized, that people do not have their individual medical data with the, uh, with the employer. 
Um, but it definitely gives you important insights of what the problems are when it comes to nutrition in your workforce. Um, yeah, so we would definitely recommend that. So there's this retailer in the UK who actually did a company-wide employee health uh, program. So they had a dietitian delivered um, the health checks and um, actually the program was a great success with 80% um, of the employees were motivated to become healthier which is of course a great result if you uh, realize how much healthy employees can also bring the, uh, bring the company. Healthy workforce is healthy business, of course. Um, and then the last area is breastfeeding support, which is a little bit different because of course we're not, um, yeah, we're talking about children of employees rather than employees themselves. But, um, it's very interesting that this is actually the area where there is most return on investment. For every dollar you put in, uh, you can gain six dollars over the long run as a company. Uh, so when we talk about breastfeeding support, it includes uh, maternity leave, it improve, includes uh, breastfeeding rooms, uh, it could include on-site childcare, for example, uh, flexible work schedules. Um, so it's yeah, if we summarize it into three buckets, uh, it's about policies and guidance. Uh, so, for example, parental leave, flexible working hours, break times, uh, what you're offering as a company. Then secondly, about arranging breastfeeding rooms. And this is very important, of course, if a uh, woman come back to the workplace and want to continue breastfeeding, uh, as a company, you play a crucial role in making that possible. So it can be about break times, but definitely also uh, to have a space where people can uh, express milk. Um, yeah, and you can think about other creative ways in these, like on-site childcare or um, yeah, people leaving early to make sure that they can breastfeed their child. There's many different opportunities. Um, and the third one is slightly different, but as important, and that is workplace culture. So uh, if you come back to the workplace, and uh, of course, breastfeeding can be a hustle if you have to combine it with work. So knowing that your managers, your colleagues are supportive of you in that process is crucial in uh, the, de the decision to uh, continue breastfeeding if that is something that you would like to do as a as a mother. Um, so Ofi actually did this in uh, Vietnam. They launched a program to support uh, mothers in the workplace, and that included raising awareness, uh, counseling sessions, and creating breastfeeding friendly spaces. And uh, female employees were really appreciative of the program. They were very positive about it with, um, again, the new facilities being instrumental to resume breastfeeding practices. And of course, as a company, you're not saying that people have to choose for breastfeeding, but you're offering uh, the opportunity to do so. And that can make a huge difference. So in today's call, um, we're also looking at what could be your role as a global lead. And uh, last time we already touched upon the fact that um, when we look at uh, companies who are working globally, uh, it is really important to have a global strategy. So as a company, say this is something we find important. Um, leadership is engaged, uh, et cetera. But then um, the actual workforce nutrition programs for that, it is really important that individual work sites feel empowered to do something on this topic, that they are on board, that they are, uh, they see the benefit of it, but also they feel like this is a realistic thing we can do and design a program that is suitable to their needs. As you saw in the examples, there's many different things you can do. Um, so yeah, for each work site, Workforce nutrition may look different. Um, so we uh, encourage a global strategy, but then 
uh, contextualized implementation uh, per worksite. And uh, some of the key considerations uh, when it comes to successful implementation is uh, first, as a global lead, um, you're sharing the story of workforce nutrition in your organization. So um, it will definitely help you to build a network of nutrition ambassadors, so to say. So have get people excited about the topic, show uh, the resources that we have, um, reach out to us if you need any uh, further support in this. But um, really, you can uh, get the ball rolling in your organization. It's um, yeah, we've been working with so many great uh, nutrition ambassadors uh, who really brought the story to life in their organizations. And then uh, secondly um start thinking about uh individual work sites who have potential to improve upon workforce nutrition and also who are interested in doing so so where leadership is engaged uh maybe not from the first moment but as we go uh into the process where leadership gets excited about this and wants to do something on this uh, and of course in last week's webinar we talked about uh, strategy and where you stand as an organization and now it's time to think about more practically okay where do we start do we start with a pilot approach do we um yeah which work sites uh would be most interested to start on this topic and perhaps they can be the front runners and engage other uh, work sites later on in the process uh, and then of course there is um uh, you can play a role in providing access to support so uh, this can just be this can be as simple as sharing the guidebooks that we have a bit, uh, developed as an uh, alliance so i will touch upon that later um, it could also be giving access to the master class that we have developed i will also touch upon that later um, but and perhaps you have different things in mind how you could support uh, those work sites and related to that, we also recommend to utilize the expertise that you have within the organization. So you could be a food company, for example. So you definitely have some nutritionists on board who can support in developing a program like this. And um, related to that, you could also bring on external support. So a local nutritionist, for example, if that is uh, if you feel that that is needed. Um, it can be a great opportunity to connect worksites to each other to facilitate uh, cross learning. So, for example, if you have indeed some worksites who are a bit further ahead or they already started a workforce nutrition program, they may be able to share some of their experiences with other worksites. And I mentioned it earlier, but don't be uh, afraid about any uh, costs of workforce nutrition. I think this is one of the most cost-effective, uh, feasible programs that you can think of. And even at a, a small budget, uh, you can make differences. For example, if you uh, are already providing some food, you can just, even within the same budget, I'm sure you can make some changes to make it, uh, to start making the food a little bit healthier. Uh, so don't be, uh, don't be afraid about uh, spending, uh, too much money on this because within every budget there's something feasible so i already touched upon some of the tools that we have available and you some of you might already be aware of it but um just to introduce or remind you we have on all of these four topics we have guidebooks available and these are very practical documents to talk about the um the the evidence for these topics, the like the reasons why you uh, could be interested to invest in this. Uh, and then it uh, has some case studies, but most importantly, it has a very concrete action plan of what you could be doing uh, as an uh, employer on uh, all of these topics. So for example, when it comes to healthy food at work, it includes um, very practical guidance on what you could be doing uh, yeah, which foods, uh, how you could practically shift to healthier foods, like what foods do we consider healthy, for example, um, like some tips and tricks on how to uh, get going with all of this. 
uh, what are budget friendly changes, but also um, how can you play around with pricing and placement to direct people towards healthy choices. Um, and all of these documents are yeah, built up in this very practical way. So this is uh, what it looks like. Um, yeah, a screenshot of what the documents look like. And then, um, as I mentioned, there is uh, the masterclass that we're offering. So uh, this is starting in September. So September, October, November this year. And uh, this is an online support program where we um, work together with HR professionals uh, of each individual work site to help them set up a workforce nutrition program. So if you are interested as a global company to start working on workforce nutrition, you may want to nominate a few work sites to participate in this masterclass. And uh, in these work sites, you, uh, yeah, it's most often someone from the HR team, it could be in a different place in the organization, but they can participate in the online masterclass, connect to their peers and also learn from experts to start building their own workforce nutrition program. So this uh, masterclass includes live online session. It also includes some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, we have tools and resources available and it addresses all of the four nutrition themes. So as a company, you can prior think about what you want to prioritize, where you want to start, but we're offering guidance on all four themes. And um, in this, you're learning from experts and uh, also you're connecting with uh, other companies and learn from them how they are doing it or how they are um, addressing their challenges, what their successes are to get inspired as well. Uh, so by the end of this program, you have really set out what you can do as a company on workforce nutrition and you can um, continue <clears throat> the implementation on your own. So this is what that looks like in practice. Before uh, the masterclass starts, um, we ask you to do the self-assessment of where you stand as a company. And we have a call together to review, like what does the self-assessment uh, say and where, what are your areas for improvement and what could you focus on? And then during this three-month masterclass, we have uh, live online sessions, uh, with experts, with peers. So this is a group of 20 companies, more or less. Uh, we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching. You have access to all the tools and resources you need. Um, and at the end of the process, you also get certification. And of course, we uh, create some online visibility for both the participant and the company. And um, it goes through this process. So First, we start with exploring your situation. What could you be doing on workforce nutrition? And then we help you define your goals and your activities, like what would be relevant for your context and to develop your plan. And then of course, you are ready to start implementation. So this is really a results-driven approach. And even after these three months, when you're uh, good to go on your own, we're still available uh, to support you with any practical issues you run into, um, any questions you may have. And you won't only have us to support you, but you've also met companies from across the world um, yeah, that you can connect with and ask questions to. Uh, and this is also a time where you can start uh, showing the successes that you've reached as a company. So uh, we already did this once and actually our first cohort ended in April, so only recently. And we had this wonderful group of 21 companies from nine different countries. And uh, together we were reaching 30,000 employees. So it was really great to work with these people and to see their enthusiasm and their inspiration to get started with workforce nutrition. And we had some feedback, of course, from this group. And some of the things that people said uh, was that they really liked the diversity uh, in the group. So we had uh, people from very different settings. Um, but 
participants said, despite these differences, we face the same type of problems. And I think that is very true. So as we saw on the last slide, we go through this process uh, during the masterclass that really is relevant for each company, whether you are an office, whether you are a, a factory, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's relevant. The process is very similar across the board. They also really appreciate the facilitation, um, open, patient, teach well. Uh, people mentioned that uh, they were easy to reach. Um, so that's really great to hear as well. And then uh, companies also commented on the step-by-step -step approach that they really appreciated because even though some companies may have uh, the capacity to work on the topic of workforce nutrition, um, sometimes they felt like, okay, where do I start? So um, having this process, having uh, people to guide you through the process can really help to make it easy and uh, to comprehend like where, uh, how can I make this feasible in my organization? So having that framework of where to start and where to go, having resources available can really help to, um, to start your workforce nutrition program and um really chopping it into small tasks instead of this big um big idea of starting a group for nutrition program so uh what does this mean in practice it's a uh yeah on average two hours per week uh that people will spend on it um but it really helps you to be time efficient make get the most out of your available resources one thing we do for example is not only providing this process and framework um, to really think through a cost-efficient cost efficient program, but we also think help you think through what are the activities that are most impactful, that fit with your business, and that are, um, yeah, that are cost-effective and impactful at the same time. Um, yeah, so in the end, we really help you to make the most of it. So um, the participation, in the masterclass is um, 1,495 euros per worksite. And this is really to cover our costs to make sure that we can continue offering this type of support to companies. Um, and of course, if you're a global company, you can join with different worksites so they can learn from each other, but also learn from other companies. And um, what we've experienced so far, that is a great, um, yeah, that is really a great opportunity. So to summarize our offering uh, one more time, you may have heard about it in the last webinar already, but we have this fast track for leaders and uh, we had this, th today's the last session, but the recordings are available uh, online and they will also be shared in the chat. Um, so we had one session on strategy and today's session for successful implementation. And this is really for global leads. And then for worksite managers, uh, we have a session in June and we're offering it two times um, to really uh, think through how workforce nutrition could benefit their worksite and what it takes practically to successfully implement at their worksite. So this really, um, yeah, talks about it more practically, like what does it mean for your, uh, for your work site to get going on this journey? And uh, if you are a global lead and you think that some work site managers might be interested, we definitely encourage you to invite them to this roadmap to implementation session. And then lastly, there is HR professionals, people within, that worksite who then actually action the worksite workforce nutrition program. So they are the ones that are designing a program that is really, uh, yeah, the best fit for that specific worksite. So they are, um, yeah, they should be uh, empowered to really make the most out of it and to really build powerful programs like, like we saw in the examples earlier. So um, this is the Workforce Nutrition Masterclass and it starts in September to November this year, two hours per week time investment and 1,495 euros per worksite. So closing off um, this webinar before we go into the Q&A, 
is if you're taking one thing away today, um, it would be to sign up your worksite managers. If you're a global lead and you think that this could be interesting, this type of support, uh, but also just to learn more about workforce nutrition, um, yeah, uh, invite your worksite managers to attend the roadmap to implementation session. So we're held it, we're having the two the same session two times. So that is June 1st and June 15th. Um, we have set the time in the well European morning so that it's feasible for both uh, Asia and Africa. If you are in a different time zone, let us know. Um, yeah, you can either uh, sign up to receive the recording or um, if there's a lot of interest, we can also facilitate a session in a different time zone. So what is on the agenda for the session? The sessions, um, first of all, how workforce nutrition can benefit your work sites. And then secondly, practical insights in building a successful workforce nutrition program. So what does it, what are the key criteria to really make this a success? And what, do, what does it practically mean to get going on this journey? And then, of course, also tools and resources to make it happen. Um, so I just wanted to close off. We've been talking a lot about the practicalities, but in the end, workforce attrition is such a wonderful way to impact um, employees uh, and communities. And uh, of course, you receive benefits as a business as well. So it's really like triple fold uh, benefits. So I'm very excited to work on this topic. I'm very excited that you joined today, and um, I hope you get inspired to join uh, join this journey um, with us as well. Thank you so much, and uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the Q and A box. And I'm now handing over to Anavis to see if any questions uh, came in. Yes, thank you, Miriam. We actually have uh, seen some questions rolling in, but before we dive into those, I would just like to ask uh, one question to our colleague, Verbal, uh, if you would like to share some other best practices that we have observed uh, in the field of workforce situation. Thank you, Anubis. <clears throat> yes, um, next week we have a, a session at the World Economic Forum with our 10 commitment makers for workforce nutrition in the last year. They, they made commitments for um, at the uh, at the nutrition for work uh, nutrition for goals um, summit, and we uh, and we um, compiled a booklet of all their best practices, challenges, recommendations, and benefits. So we will share this also with you um, later uh, next week. And uh, in this booklet, you find um, you find different experiences from uh, companies in Japan, from companies in <clears throat> from companies in Africa, Asia, Europe. And with, uh, on the different, uh, also on different pillars and on different areas. So, and um, it's it's really very helpful to see what um, what uh, companies already on the journey can uh, can experience and how the benefits uh, trickle down into their system to really help um, help employees to be healthier and more productive. Thank you, Beryl. Indeed, the, the commitment book is very inspirational. I've seen, I've had a glance at it already. Um, and then there's one question that I would like to ask to Miriam, which is on uh, the offering of a masterclass. So I saw one question coming in um, that was uh, about uh, when, yeah, the, the offering and, and when you can sign up. So is it also possible uh, to join the masterclass a little bit later if the um, if a sign up, signing up, yeah, if signing up may take a little bit more time than uh, than anticipated, and if we if they can also sign up later in September. Thank you so much, Anagis. Well, actually, this is really um, uh, the, the masterclass is hosted from September to November, so we uh, really encourage you to sign up early um, to yeah have uh, the time to prepare for it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are doing the, uh, we're having a call with you to do the uh, review of the self-assessment scorecard to really get you prepared and get you, help you think through what uh, workforce nutrition 
could mean for your specific work site. Um, so yes, this is a one time, uh, like one moment uh, in time uh, cohort. And the advantage of that is that you are working with a group of companies. So in the current cohort, we had 21 companies who really got to know each other. Uh, it was really a fun group to work with. And um, people were also helping each other with their challenges because we, of course, have a lot of experience working with companies. We can, um, yeah, we can uh, share information from our expertise. Uh, but then really to work with your peers is such an advantage. And that is also why we are having um, this one uh, time slot where people can attend. And of course, we'll be having master classes in, uh, in the next year. Uh, those dates aren't planned yet, but we will definitely keep you updated once we have uh, dates available for those. Um, but uh, for now, I would definitely recommend to invite your colleagues to the roadmap to implementation sessions in June. And then uh, for work sites who are interested to already sign up for the masterclass, if that is something uh, that could help th them to get going. Uh, because of course, uh, we're, we also encourage companies to start on workforce nutrition um, yeah, on their own, if that is, uh, if, if they are, uh, have the capacity and in-house resources to do so. But if not, if companies feel that they need a little bit extra support, we're here to help. And um, yeah, we're doing that through the masterclass, which is really a great uh, impactful tool. Yes, um, and I saw a second question related to this. Um, if there, for example, would be an additional session during sp spring 2023, for example. Yes, we're definitely uh, planning for this. So this is uh, not scheduled yet, but you can expect uh, a second or a third cohort in, um, in spring 23, indeed. Uh, so if, if the timing is a bit off for your company, September is a little bit too early for you, that is definitely something uh, we recommend. And we will, uh, we will keep you in the loop if anything is, um, yeah, if you, if you want to discuss uh, further opportunity and also if anything is uh, coming up. So uh, in general, um, I would also just like to say that if you would like to discuss with us how uh, this could work for your company, what could be the best approach for your specific company, feel free to reach out. We're happy to have a call with you to help you think it through whether this would be feasible uh, for your specific setting or if you are a global company, where do you start um, in this journey? We're happy to uh, connect to you, so please feel free to reach out. And maybe to add to that, the easiest way in, uh, to do so is uh, I will send out an information, an email after the session, probably uh, latest by the end of this week with the slides and the recording. And you can just respond to that email uh, with any uh, requests that you may have, anything uh, you would like to follow up on with us. These are the questions that I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much, uh, Annelise, and thank you uh, all for participating. It was wonderful to have you today, and uh, we're looking forward to staying in touch with you. Have a lovely rest of your day, and thank you.